G'day legends, so in this video we're going to be talking about one of the craziest 24 hours in MMA news since one of the last times Hamzat Shemaya fought, the last time Hamzat fought against Nate Diaz. We haven't had a new cycle like that since all the way back then and unfortunately Hamzat was involved in both of them. So we're going to be talking about the new fight, Hamzat Shemaya versus Robert Whittaker and we're also going to be talking about what I think the future of Hamzat Shemaya's career looks like and it's not very good. First of all, let's start with the new main event, Robert Whittaker versus Iskam Ileskerov, Aleskerov, however you pronounce it. Yesterday, there was lots of people talking about it. I did my own live stream as well. And the general vibe, the general consensus of this one is Robbie should win it. This must be an easier fight for Rob. And I've got to tell you straight away, my gut reaction to this fight is not good. It makes me a little bit nervous. Now, I started to bring this up with some of the commenters and some of the people in chat, and they started mirroring back to me, look at Iskadov Iskadov's list. Look at all the people that he's fought in the past. He is a bit of a cam crusher. He's only been in the UFC for like two fights, three fights. He 100% doesn't deserve this massive step up. That is kind of bullshit. Robert Whittaker has got years of experience. Robert Whittaker should be able to easily handle him. Listen, I was wildly confident going into the Robert Whittaker Hamzat Chimaya fight. And that is because we have seen so much of Hamzat Chimaya. And I said that Hamzat Chimaya hasn't really put anybody away with his fists. And he hasn't. When you go back and watch that fight with him versus Kamara Usman, when it comes to the stand up, Hamzat is very, very hesitant to engage in real stand up with Usman. Gilbert Burns is not the most savage striker on the hands. And he went to war with Gilbert Burns and didn't put him away. And then, of course, there's all the previous fights with Hamza, but they do seem to be just wrestle fests. So I was saying, as long as Robert Whittaker survives that first round of hardcore wrestling, eventually Hamza Chemaev will tire and Robbie will be able to dance around the outside and pick him apart. And I do believe that 100%. So I was wildly confident going into it. Quite frankly, Hamza Chemaev getting sick yet again, and it's seeing to be something to do with his autoimmune system, or there is just something going on in that bloke's body that is not 100%, sort of confirms the fact to me that there is just no way this guy can do a weight cut and fight somebody for nearly half an hour. I just do not believe that the guy's got the gas tank in him. So it sort of confirms to me that I was probably going to be right on that call. If you look at Hamza Chemaev over 25 minutes, Probably gasses out about the seven minute mark and Robert Whittaker picks him apart from the outside. But that is not the case anymore. You got this new kid, Ikram El Iskerov. And because he's new, sort of scares the living piss out of me. You can look at these Dagestani fighters one of two ways. You can look at their previous list and be like, can, 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 can. Why is he getting this step up? Or you can look at his list and be like, can, 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 can. Now he's getting this step up. Well, now that we are looking at this through the eyes of a predictor, we don't really know how to properly look at this guy, right? You're either the next Khabib or the next Islam Makashev, one of those blokes that outside of the UFC and on the Russian regional scene was fighting absolute cans, but then when they get into the UFC, just start dominating. Or you're like Abus Magomedov, right? Fighting a bunch of cans, get into the UFC, fight a real contender like Sean Strickland, absolutely get embarrassed and your career comes to a standstill. It can go one of two ways, and that's the thing with this fight against Robert Whittaker. It is going to go one or two ways. To me, having this new wild card thrown in the mix adds much more uncertainty to the fight and much more uncertainty makes me more nervous, which I guess leads to my enjoyability of watching the entire weekend. I don't want to go into the weekend watching something, pretty much knowing exactly what's going to happen, just sitting back being like, yep, took him down, yep, starting to gas, yep, Robert Whittaker's getting up, knew all this was going to happen. I want to feel a little bit of anticipation and excitement, and this fight actually gives me that. So I kind of like this fight more because it makes me more nervous. When it comes to the style of the fights, Robert Whittaker, right? isn't going to be putting Iskram Aliskerov away. Robert Whittaker hasn't put anybody away. And people do call Robert Whittaker chinny. He can take a punch, he can take two punches, but he will go down eventually. It's not like he has the chin of the gods. And Iskram Aliskerov has got some sick, scary Muay Thai straight down the middle, straight down the middle. So Robert Whittaker is going to have to be 100% switched on to not catch 
one of those jumping in elbows or knees up the center. These are completely different fighters. Iskram is going to be standing with a tight Muay Thai stance coming forward at Robert Whittaker. And the problem when you're versing these Dagestanis, as Dustin Poirier just talked about, is that it's very hard to get your boxing combinations going and to get your hands really, really moving when you're constantly thinking about the takedown coming at you. This is either going to be a fraud check or a brand new unveiling of a new fighter and a new contender. It is a much scarier fight, and quite frankly, a harder fight for Robert Whittaker. But I still do believe Whittaker is going to smoke him over 25 minutes, mate. The second thing that I wanted to talk to you guys about, before I get into that, if you could go ahead and subscribe to this channel, I'm trying to get to 1,000 subscribers before July 15th. If you enjoy these videos, if you've been enjoying the content that I've been putting out this week, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button so I can stop harassing the people that are already here every single day. Don't do it for me, do it for them, mate. And if you are one of the people who's here every single day getting harassed, hit the like button so this video goes out more. You see the last three videos when you guys hit the like button? It reaches heaps of people, mate. So help me out with that, please. <clears throat> right, the second thing to consider about this fight being changed is Hamzat Shemaev and his long-term uh, ability to be in the UFC. Listen, right, the UFC is a business and it does not want to lose money on any fighter ever. That is just not the way that they operate. If the Roku series has taught us anything, is that they are ruthless business people. If you do not like that, Number one, don't watch the UFC. And if you're a prospect looking to become a fighter, go to the PFL, okay? You know what this is? It says it on the bloody label. It's a sports entertainment company, right? It is what it is. Don't ask the UFC to be something that it ain't. <clears throat> so getting past the obvious fact that the UFC needs to make money on a fighter, Hamzat Chemaev is a bit of a star and I don't know what level of contract he has signed, but the higher contract that you sign to make more money means that the UFC is going to start building cards around you. Okay. They are going to start making sure that you are the main event, the audience, the entire show these days is going to be flown out to the country that you are from and the entire card is going to be built around you. If Hamzat Chemaev wants to stay in the UFC and try and be a star, at least one weight champion star, or have main events built around him, you really need to start to look at his health and whether or not he actually has the ability to perform the job that the UFC is employing him for, which is to entertain the fans at a specific date at a specific weight class. And I don't know if you can actually rely on him for that. So Hamzat Chemaev and the UFC need to make a very, very hard choice about where his future is. And it's going to involve how much they pay him and where he goes on the card. If he's going to stay in the UFC, he is never going to be getting the sort of paychecks that the other stars in the UFC get. And people already, we know this, complain that they do not get enough money as it is. So Hamzat, so Hamzat Chemaev is looking at kneecapping himself on a salary level because the UFC can now only put him on prelims or use him as a card stacker on a fairly well filled out uh, card. Let's look at UFC 303, the most recent one coming up, right? You have got the uh, Anthony Smith fight that is on there. You have got the uh, Brian Ortega, Diego Lopez fight that are on there. Now the Anthony Smith, Carlos Allberg fight is just a bit of a filler, right? It's a fun fight. We all like to see it. You know, the card isn't 100% screwed if that fight falls out, but it definitely needs to be in there. It's just one of those fights that helps fill out a pay-per-view. That is now the peak of Hamzat Chemaev's career. To be one of those fights that just sort of slides into a pay-per-view and makes it a little bit tastier. But he'll never now be employed to be the star headliner of a important card like this most recent one in Saudi Arabia or headline a UFC pay-per-view again like he did back in the day when he was meant to be headlining against Nate Diaz. The UFC just cannot afford to take the risk on this guy anymore. And the hard decision is, is that the kind of life that Hamzat Chemaev wants for himself? Does he even still want to compete? Can he still compete? If you were a Hamzat Chemaev fan, can you ever actually pick him to go a full 25 minutes or make a successful weight cut? You know, your health is what it is and not everybody was born to be a UFC fighter. And unfortunately, Hamzat Chemaev's health, it's like having one leg in his lungs. He just, he's essentially got one lung. It sucks. I'm really not trying to make fun of the guy, but I just do not think he has the health to sustain a long-term career in the UFC. Hard choices need to be made on his end and hard choices need to be made on the UFC's end as well because they're the ones paying his salary and would like to see a return on investment. So in short, what is Hamzat Chemaev's future? Not good, not good. He is either going to be a mid-level UFC entertainer for the rest of his life 
or he's not going to be performing in the UFC anymore because he just doesn't have the gas tank for it. What's going to be happening with Robert Whitaker and Askaram Ali Skedov? Robert Whitaker is still going to piece him up on the outside for 25 minutes and teach him what being a true vet in this game is, but it is a little bit more of a dangerous fight. It gives me the heebie-jeebies just a little bit more. That's it for this video. It's the weekend. You guys have a great weekend. I will see you live for the main card this weekend. Uh, until then, you all have a great day. Leave a like, leave a comment. What do you reckon about this fight, the next one for Robert Whitaker against Iskra Miloskarov? Is it better or worse? And UFC 303, do you think it's overall better now than it was before? Put that down there in the comments. Until then, I will see you all in the next video.